think what Jesus just did for us, and listen, the times you're living in, they coming. Mm -hmm. I got you. Mm -hmm. Just you keep walking, I got you. Yes. But the way you are staying in control yes. is through your patience. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you have to earn, you have to learn what patience truly is. That's right. Because Jesus used two words for patience. One means waiting, the other one means enduring. Amen. Amen. And this word here means if you endure, yes. if you learn how to endure the things that's around you, you'll be under control. That's wow. true. That's true. And when he said that your patience was, because I'm going to give you some points about patience here. He said your patience possesses your soul. He said if you learn and practice patience, yes. Samuel, you will always be in control of the situation. I had, I had the experience yesterday. If you talk to yourself, if you remind yourself, I have to be patient at the foundation of my faith. Glory to God. And if you understand that patience keeps you focused, here's, what, here's, what, here's the biblical definition of what patience means. It's the characteristic of a man who is not swayed from his deliberate purpose, his loyalty to faith, and piety by even the greatest trials and suffering. Y'all were shouting a little while ago. Let me, let me say it again. They were shouting a little while ago. Everybody got quiet on me right now. Let me say it again. What patience means is this. It don't mean sitting around making you feel sorry for yourself. Come on. Patience means I'm not going to be swayed for my delivered purpose. Come on, man. We taught you over the last couple of weeks. Your purpose is your calling. So whatever God spoke over you, that's your purpose. So patience said, I don't care how bad it looks for the moment. Because it's going to get bad at times. I'm not going to sway from the fact. That I have, I have an international ministry. Amen. I'm not going to sway from the fact that I'm a millionaire. I'm not going to sway from the fact that God made me an apostle. I don't care how bad it gets. My patience says I'm not going to sway from it because that is my deliberate purpose. Do you know what your purpose is? Yeah. That's my deliberate purpose. And I'm going to stay loyal to my faith. Which means I'm not going to lose my confidence in God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say what he said. Amen. Now watch this I'm teaching you now. So when I'm, when I'm, when I'm a patient person. I am never getting disconnected from my purpose. Amen. My Lord. God, you can tell me I'm a millionaire. I can be as broken your eyes as all our doors. When I open my mouth, you'll think I'm a millionaire. Amen. But I'm not going to sway from my purpose. I'm not going to complain about not having money. I'm going to thank God for the money he promised me. Amen. I ain't in the right church, but I feel like I'm preaching. Because I'm taking something over this patience thing. So I got to be Lord of my faith and piety. I got to know that God is first in all things. Come on. So now that we understand that, when Jesus said, you will going to catch hell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the Lord is going to bring you a testimony. That's true. Amen. That's and if you want to survive it, you need to be patient. That's right. And if somebody don't teach you, you would think that means you just need to wait. Come on. Come on. No. Come on. You got to wait connected to your purpose. You can't speak against your purpose. You can't speak against God's grace. You gotta wait. You gotta wait in your faith, practicing those things that God told you to practice. Yes. That's what patience really is. Yes. And what I told you last week, God gave you patience when you can't believe no more. Come on, yes. 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 Right yes. I have another yes. point. I'm just gonna remind you what I told you last week. Patience is given to you. That's why I say through faith and patience. Mm -hmm. Every one of us who have been used of God, you come to the place where you can't believe no more. Yeah. If you can't be honest about that, you're a liar. If you're walking on this road, you, you don't quit. But you come to the place where believing don't make sense. That's true. Yeah. That's true. That's true. You come to the place where it looks like God's a liar. Come on. Let me pray. I, I'm come on. Come on. If you want to be honest now, we're not talking about Moses. <laughs> no, no. If you want to be honest, if you're walking with God, you receive the promise, you gave your time, you served in ministry, you prayed, you did everything, and yet still, most of the times you wake up looking at nothing's going to happen on your, on your behalf. Amen. And here he said, the reason I'm giving you patience is because you need to go to that. That's a part of your testimony. Right. But patience is going to keep you connected. Yes. Yes. Are you hearing? Yes. Patience is going to keep you connected when things look impossible. Come on, sir. Patience helps you to believe in hope against hope. Yes. Yes. We talked about that last week. Now, see, because if somebody don't teach you patience, you'll get tired of waiting. Amen. But when your patience is active, waiting. I'm waiting but I'm doing something. I'm waiting but I'm believing. I'm waiting but I still have hope. I'm waiting but I'm still I'm confessing. Still have confidence in God. So my patience is going to keep me connected when the devil tells me it's over. Amen. I'll be here. Amen. I'm going to hold on, on to who I am. Amen. That's why Paul says, the son of impossible wrought among you among patience. Mm -hmm. See, he was, Jesus was talking to his leaders. And for those of you, I, I'm going to change this message a little bit. I can see it coming. 
But those of you who are leaders, the first thing you gotta understand is patience. We didn't even look at your love confession. The first thing it says about love is love and patience. That's right. He's trying to tell you something. Yes. That if you want to stay under control, if you don't want to cuss people out, if you don't want to walk away, if you don't want to shoot nobody, y'all better than if you don't want to stab somebody, because some of y'all still struggling. Some of say, man, if you don't want to do all these things, you have to learn. <laughs> you have to learn how to understand and active and actively practice patience. Amen. So no matter what they do to you, you stay connected with God's sake. Amen. Yes, Lord. Out of our heart. See, the thing I like about patience, Pastor Glover, is that patience is the final work of hope. Mm -hmm. See, when I have hope, the Bible says, we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. Mm -hmm. For what a man see it, why is he had hope for? Yeah. But if we hope for that we see not, then we do with patience wait for it. Yeah. 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 I'm teaching too good for y'all yeah. to be talking about yeah. Yeah. We have to understand about these things. Lest we get discouraged. Lest we walk away. Lest we become disillusioned. If we don't understand how this kingdom works, this is kingdom strategy right here. Yeah. This is the life of faith. This is the life how you live in the kingdom. You have to learn that patience is in the midst of all things. It is the foundation that you stand on to have faith. Because your faith is going to fail you. I can't preach to this y'all. I, I need somebody on it. I need one on first go, yes, amen. Amen. You know that in time, when you told yourself, I ain't going back to no church. I ain't even going back to general law. Amen. I don't see that big old boy in the parcel no more. I ain't got nothing to do. I've done with this stuff. So, <laughs> I reach my arms, I tell you. <laughs> but see, but if you <laughs> if you understand. What, what God is teaching us right now is all this is a part of your testimony. Yes. But in order for you to be a light to the world, preach God, you know, in order for you to be a light to the world, you have to understand patience. Yes. For you to be in possession of yourself, then trip, start tripping. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on can they talk here? For you to be in control of yourself, when, work, when hell starts to break loose, mm -hmm. and loved ones start tripping, and everybody going crazy, and the devil talking 100 miles out. And here's what happens. You slip in that behavior again. Come on. Yeah. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Good God from time to preach into it. I know all of y'all are holding, but some of us, we still slip. We thank God for grace. We thank God for salvation. But every now and then, we're going to hide. I thought I was going to have a pastor 10 two days ago. A pastor lover. But the devil got on my neck before I knew that I was speaking the tongues of the world again. Come on. Tell the truth. Yeah. I know the preacher where y'all go to church don't, don't, that don't happen to him. I don't cuss all the time. I used to cuss a lot. I thought I was delivered from it until pressure got on me. Oh, oh, Everybody on my side, amen. Amen. Yeah. amen. Yeah. <laughs> the marriage will bring the pressure against get you speaking the doubt. The relationship will get you. <laughs> y'all don't want to be honest, I'm just going to preach to myself. When you got your loved ones around you tripping and, you, and, they get, and the devil get to talking to you. Children, children, children. Somebody say, hey, amen. You got family. If you got people in the house, Come on. every now and then, every five or six months or so, you got to let some fuse out. The pressure begin to build up, Pastor Glover. And every <laughs> some people in five or six days, and every now and then, you got to release the vibe so the pressure can come out. And then you apologize later and say, thank God for salvation. Someone say amen. amen. I'm not encouraging you to do that. I'm just telling you in the midst of that, you still got to be patient. Yes. Amen. You still got to stay connected. Yes. Well, I'm teaching so good here. Yes. In the midst of when you fail in your humanity, the thing you told yourself you'll never do, the thing that people around you expect you not to do, Come on. because you're human, it's for your testimony. Yes. But in the midst of that, in your patience possessing your soul. Amen. So the fact that you, you, you failed then, next time you know I can use patience instead of responding. But yes. since I have patience, I'm going to use it after I respond. Okay. Anyway, to get me back on track. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. Come on. Come on. Boy, I appreciate it so good here. I feel like I can stop right now and start hooting. Watch this. Watch this. Patience. Am I helping you out here? Yes. I have to understand that I got to stay connected. Mm -hmm. I don't care what happens. Because patience is the foundation of my hope. And I took, I took some notes here. I'm not good with notes. Faith, patience is the final proof of trust. Mm -hmm. Mm. Oh, you know. Your final exam for when you trust God or not to be when you can be patient in the midst of trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe it's Romans 12, That's 12, true. patience and tribulation, rejoice and hope. Mm -hmm. And God, the Holy Spirit began to reveal me. The Bible says, The Lord knoweth them that trust Him. He's a bucket of them that trust Him. Mm -hmm. 
He know who you are because he see you in the midst of all your troubles, maintaining your patience. Amen. Uh, he is saying, Charles didn't quit, so he must trust me. Yeah. Charles keeps saying the right thing on his mouth, so he just trust me. Mm -hmm. Charles didn't sin against me with his lips, so he must trust me. I don't do that today, but there was a time when I wasn't quite delivered from that. Somebody say amen. amen. So when, amen. See, the, the thing about Job and his patience, the Bible says Job never sinned against God with his lips.